Hey everyone, last year I filmed this video about where I find my vintage cookbooks. At the time I was living in Ohio and I've since moved to Northern California, so I thought it would be nice to provide a little update about where I've been finding my books lately. My friend Tommy recently sent me this photo that he took in an antique store, and I think this sign perfectly describes why I like to collect vintage cookbooks. We love vintage cookbooks for their great and wacky recipes and also for the amazing illustrations and photos. And that's a big part of why I do it. It's fun and interesting to revisit Visit the past through food. You can learn a lot about the past through food trends, you know, what was going on at the time, what ingredients were available at the time, and these older cookbooks, that is what they provide for me. Some collectors like books that hold value. They're, they're very rare or expensive, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> That's fine if you want to collect these books for their value. I like to use them, so I'm not going to go buy a very expensive, very rare book and then get food on the pages. I don't want that to happen. Happen. So I tend to go for less expensive sources of books. I'll pick up books that are maybe like a little bit rough around the edges. You already know I especially love it when books have a little bit of writing in them. I think that adds to their character and charm. I'm gonna start with thrift stores. One of the most popular thrift stores that people think of is Goodwill. Back in my original video, I, I think I mentioned, I don't really find much at Goodwill. And I thought, okay, well, I've moved. I've completely moved across the country. Maybe it's different here. I'm still not finding anything at Goodwill. That's not to say I visited every single Goodwill in the state of California. I'm just talking about the locations that I live close to. And that goes for all of these places. I'm not traveling like far and wide to get cookbooks. It's, you know, within 10 miles of my house. I typically don't make it a point to like travel really far to find cookbooks. As for some of the other thrift stores, I have had some luck here. I mentioned that I had better luck at thrift stores that were run by like a church or a hospital or something like that smaller organizations that maybe aren't nationwide and that kind of holds true here a little bit the first store I want to mention is st. Vincent de Paul now I know that there are st. Vincent de Paul locations all over the country my grandma used to shop at one in her town that she would take me to and I loved it but really I don't see too many of them in fact I don't think I'd ever been to another st. Vincent de Paul location until I moved here and we have a great one I actually looked this place up before we moved and I was thrilled Thrilled, thrilled to find photographs online of the book section because I mean it's not just cookbooks it's novels music books I mean just about anything you could want if you love books and you want to purchase a lot of them this is the place for you I don't go thrifting every week I go maybe once a month once every six weeks but I almost always find really good things here there are modern cookbooks here typically the ones I like to pick up are from before I was born <laughs> display wise they tend to put the newer cookbooks like up front at first glance at this place like I don't immediately identify old cookbooks I have to kind of like dig behind I have found some real gems here the other thrift store that I like to shop at here is called hope thrift and there are only a few locations it is run by an organization that provides resources and job opportunities and training for people with developmental disabilities they have a smaller book section and I don't always find things here but it's it's always a good place to look I have found some really really nice books here. I did go to a few more thrift shops. I actually went like one town over one day when I had some time and I went to three different thrift stores, didn't come up with any books. In fact, there was one thrift shop that I went to that didn't even have books. I thought that was unusual in general, but this was a very big thrift store. The location used to be some sort of like big box store, grocery store, so it was big. And I went around that store three times. I could not find any books. I, I'm positive they just did not carry them. I don't know that I've ever been to a thrift shop that didn't have at least some books. I do live near a small neighborhood that is mostly antique shops. I was very excited about that when I was doing a little research about where we were going to move. I have visited that neighborhood a couple of times. The first time I went, I was very disappointed. The shops are nice, they're really cute. I just didn't find any cookbooks. There was one particular shop that I really wanted to visit and they were closed and it was because they were decorating for the holidays or something like that. I recently did get to visit that shop and I 
I'm so happy that I did. I don't know if you've ever been to a place where you're like, this is, this is what my brain looks like. Like if you were to get inside of my head, this is what it would look like. That was this shop. It was very cute. It had tons of stuff that I like and collect. Found a few vintage cookbooks, of course. I'm glad that I revisited this place. I will be back to this, to this shop. I absolutely loved it. It's pretty dangerous. I could spend a lot of money there. <laughs> In my last video, I talked about purchasing books online and how I didn't really do it. I've started purchasing books online. I joined a few cookbook groups on Facebook and some of the lovely members there have posted about certain booksellers that are having sales. And often these sales are like buy two books, get one free with free shipping. So that's three books plus free shipping. The pricing works out to be really good most of the time. It may be slightly more than what I would pay at a thrift store, but not by much. It works a little bit better if you kind of have an idea of the things you like or the things that you're looking for going in. In my case, I was looking for Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks because I'm I'm kind of trying to complete my collection back here, you know, I'm, I'm on a mission now. And they did have several Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks and they were not expensive, maybe $3, something like that. And by the time you bought two of them and picked your free one, like it was even less than that. I mentioned cookbook groups on Facebook. There are also buy and sell cookbook groups there. You can check those out as well. I also mentioned half price books in my first video and you know, I didn't usually find a lot there. Sometimes I would find an older book on clearance or something like that. I visited the half price books in my town here and I was pleasantly surprised. They did have some vintage cookbooks just in the regular cookbook section. They're a little bit more expensive, but the condition is usually really good. In fact, I got this cookbook at half price books, Betty Crocker's new dinner for two cookbook. I paid $5.99 for this. I think that's a great price because it is in really nice condition and it's a book that I've been looking for. This is one of the ones that I really, really wanted to add to my collection. So I went ahead and snapped it up. They also have some cookbooks in the antique and rare book section. I flipped through there when they said antique and rare books, they didn't lie about that. Um, I picked one book up that was very small. I think it was about sourdough bread. I should find it and put it here. It's probably some really popular, really rare cookbook that everybody's looking for. But I picked it up and I looked at it and I think it was like $80. So I put that right back. That was not coming home with me. <laughs> so that's where I've been finding vintage cookbooks in my new home. Now I want to share a few of my recent finds with you. I'm going to start with Betty Crocker's Guide to Easy Entertaining. How to have guests and enjoy them. I found this at the antique store that I mentioned a little bit earlier. This was $8, but again, the condition is good. It also has the sweetest inscription inside. You can see it here. 1-1-1966 gift to Nana Lulu from Grandfather Willa Lulu. These must have been some family nicknames. To be passed on to Holly Baby very soon. She is 10 and a half now. We'll be entertaining on her own. <laughs> It's a great, great addition to my Betty Crocker collection. I also found a few of these little promotional booklets at the same antique store. We have one from Sun Made Raisin. I know people don't like raisins, but you know, it's cute. This one's called Let's Cook Italian with Hunt's tomato paste. We've got Mexican cookery for American homes. I've seen this around before. It is from Gebhardt's. Gebhardt's has kind of an interesting history. I was not super familiar with them, but they used to have a lot of different products that they offered. Bird's Eye Cookbook. Tempting recipes for good meals. I love these little thin like booklets, these little promotional booklets. Sometimes they have really good recipes in them. Sometimes they're a little unusual. The brand trying to shoehorn all of their food products into every recipe and it can get a little weird. I didn't know I needed this in my life until I found it. This one came from St. Vincent de Paul, the Sherlock Holmes cookbook. It has lunch, tea, dinner, supper, Baker Street meals and menus. I really, I'm really excited to get more into this one. This one is not from before I was born, but it holds some very good childhood memories. Let me know, do you remember this cookbook? <laughs> So this was like an, a TV cookbook. Like I remember seeing ads for this so often, so often when I was a kid and I begged for this cookbook and I did get it. My mom and dad did get me this cookbook for Christmas. It is kind of <laughs> silly. Like some of the recipes in here are, I wouldn't exactly call them special effects. It's more like, you know, fun ways to garnish things. We have the colorful dinosaur face pizza. I wouldn't say that's a special effect. That's just kind of a way to top a pizza. I I made a ghost cake with flaming eyes for Halloween and they do have that in here, but it's not a ghost. It's 
a skeleton. So they do a skeleton cake with fiery eyes. <laughs> my original copy, I'm not sure what happened to it over the years. I may have passed it on or donated it. But when I saw this, I had to pick it up. This was one of the cookbooks that I purchased from an online seller. Finally, I thought this was really interesting. And something tells me it's probably like still a good source of information for people today. The Book of Tofu. And look at this, look how thick this book is. I mean, this has got to have everything you ever wanted to know about tofu and more. So like how to even make your own tofu, different kinds, tons of recipes in here on what to do with it. I tend to go more for like firm tofu that I saute with some vegetables and eat with like rice or noodles. But this, this really goes into more interesting things that you can do with tofu. Do you have this cookbook? Have you used it? I would love to hear about it. So let me know in the comments down below. Actually, if you have any of these cookbooks or you have good memories of these cookbooks. I would love to know more about that too. That is my update. If you want to start collecting or you want to add to your existing collection, I would encourage you to start exploring your immediate area, especially if you've moved. It can vary from place to place quite a bit. Just look around, just explore. This is a really fun hobby and I would encourage you to get started. And if you have any questions, please ask me. Like I would, I would love to talk more about this. One of my favorite parts of making these videos is meeting the people in this community. It's been amazing. Thing. For a long time, I was kind of like alone with my cookbooks being like, can you believe this weird recipe or this weird thing they said? And now I know there are people out there who also have this hobby. So it's been really awesome just to sort of find those people and talk to them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button below. I post content centered on food, vintage cookbooks and retro recipes every single week. Thanks again. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.